So I'm not used to this machine, but I guess it looks pretty okay. So uh, I want to talk today about some kind of a theory of a function of the height beat. How, how does the height beat? So that will be the theme. Uh, it's an area of science which goes back uh, 350 years to the work uh, of Huygens. Huygens did some great work uh, where he looked at the synchronization of two pendulum clocks on a ship. He noticed that they each had a pendulum, but at some point they were being in unison. The pendulums would move back and forth together. And he had a great theory and understanding of how that happened. And the idea is that the clocks were attached to the same ballast, the same beam on the boat. And the beam allowed them to communicate uh, some of that, this, this beating of the two uh, clocks. I call it beating in unison. They were uh, moving in the same phase uh, because of the communication through this uh, long beam that they were t attached to. Uh, that's 350 years ago, Huygens. And uh, since then, it's been a big subject. Uh, I think Huygens had a successful model, mathematical model in that case. Uh, many, many people have worked on different aspects of it uh, come to mind. Uh, yeah, it would work uh, especially with the mother heart. Uh, various people, uh, and I follow some of Strogatz. Strogatz more recently has written popular articles and done a lot of research on this subject. Uh, and so uh, what I've done is read Strogatz quite a bit. He, uh, he was a postdoc with a student of mine 50 years ago, Nancy Capel, who was also working on similar areas uh, of the heart. And uh, uh, recently, uh, I was thinking about you know, the problem of uh, understanding that. And so, uh, so I got uh, in communication with him, with Strogatz, about that subject. And he, he said that all the work on it was either too complicated or too simple. You know, it was not satisfactorily understood. Well, in the last year, half a year, I've been working with uh, Indika and Charles Pugh on the subject and uh, trying to construct some kind of a mathematical theory of the heart, heartbeat. Uh, it was more than just the uh, heartbeat. It's trying to introduce uh, and develop the ideas of uh, uh, differential equations in biology. Uh, these are differential equations uh, which have more to do with the, uh, the genome. There is a lot of work on differential equations in biology, but probably none of it is genome oriented. So what we're doing is to look at differential equations of the genome. Okay, uh, so towards that end, Indika and I wrote a paper maybe a year and a half ago on the uh, differential equations for gene expression in the cells. We call it single cell uh, dynamics with no differential equations, which describe gene expression. It's got a big history to that subject, but I think we were the ones who really dared to write down general equations for that. Of course, all these things are successive approximations, but we did write down a formal system of ordinary differential equations, all dynamical systems for gene expression for the gene in a single cell. And eventually, what I want to talk about today is how to combine different cells uh, to understand the heartbeat. Okay, so uh, gene expression, you could think of this in terms of 
RNA quantities, or eventually even uh, proteins, because of translation. Uh, so you could think of, in some sense, again, idealizing a lot of ordinary differential equations or dynamics of the proteins in a single cell. Okay, so that's what is our starting point. And we, we have already written a paper or two about that, but now we want to look at the heart. And the idea is, if we look at the myocytes, most of the cells or half the cells in the heart uh, have their own beat, but they beat in their own right. And somehow, they coordinate their beats to give the beat of the heart. And that's the theme of uh, this work. The, uh, how do you put together the coordination of those uh, individual cells called myocytes so that they uh, are like this pendulum problem of, uh, well, I mentioned of Huygens 350 years ago. There was some kind of communication and you put them together to get a uh, beating of the heart. So I want to uh, describe uh, some efforts in that direction. And some successes, but it's, I would say, uh, a problem which is, in some sense, very old, and we did not, uh, you know, quite. Fa I think we almost may have solved it, but it's certainly not not finished. There are some uh, interesting problems to be resolved. And I want to talk about those today. All right, so. Uh, I want to do this in a mathematical framework. So I'm focusing on mathematics, especially mathematics of ordinary differential equations or dynamical systems as related to the uh, uh, genome and eventually the heartbeat. This is not an area which is uh, developed at all. Biologists uh, tend to not understand or be interested in ordinary differential equations uh, partly because the history of mathematic, mathematicians using differential equations in biology, which I've been part of, always has ignored the genome. There are differential equations uh, in no parts of biology. There's a, uh, journals of the subject, but it's not genome oriented. And so uh, I think biologists think it's not so important if it doesn't deal with the genome, and maybe they're right. Okay, so we want to focus on differential equations related to the genome. And starting with a single cell, uh, differential equations of a single cell. And uh, the first thing I did with Indica was to look at a single cell where uh, you had the proteins uh, uh, as related to uh, ordinary differential equation, and then uh, we thought of as a single cell as being identified with the equilibria of the dynamics. So you have a source, the equilibrium is a source for the dynamics, so the, the, the uh, protein distributions, the quantities of the pr different proteins, would oscillate around the equilibria. So the, this equilibria is the focus of our work, uh, our earlier paper. For the dynamics, it was idealized. Everything we do is highly idealized. That's why people say what I'm doing is not realistic, and I insist that not be realistic. I want to be idealistic. <laughs> and I'm inspired by you know people like Newton, for example, who uh, equations of motions ignored uh, friction. And so on earthly applications of Newton's equations of motion, they didn't really have any uh, realistic aspects until friction was incorporated, 100 years after Newton. The same with uh, Watson and Crick. They uh, ignored completely the fact that the DNA was wrapped around a core of proteins, the stones. And so uh, it was a far cry from really understanding uh, realistic models of the, uh, the genome dynamics. 
the, ge the genome because they didn't have a chromatin in the, the stones. So these, but these, these are both great successes and they're succeeded by idealization, not by being realistic. So that's my inspiration. I'm inspired by those, uh, by those uh, examples. And so in particular, I'm idealizing a lot about the differential equations. First, mainly for the proteins in a single cell. First, for proteins in a single cell. And for, uh, for the uh, heart, the single cells, the dominant proteins are the actin and myosin. And I'm again, simplifying a lot because a lot of things like electric potentials and calcium come into that picture. But I'm thinking this maybe, for example, proteins, protein distributions, and even just the two, the actin and myosin. Okay, uh, so, but it's a little more complicated now because it has to do with the heartbeat. So uh, you just can't say it's oscillation is about an equilibrium. It's oscillation, it's, uh, it's about, there is a basic uh, periodic solution, uh, which is the uh, view of the heart. It's a periodic solution, and what one is doing is oscillating uh, the proteins about that periodic solution. So that's different than what we did before. And so it's, it's interesting now because we have a dynamics uh, of a periodic solution in the single cells, the myocytes of the heart. And these are uh, oscillations which are attracting. Uh, everything, in fact, we assume everything is attracting towards the oscillation in the single cell. That's you know, the main idealization, perhaps. So it's a basin. It's a uh, attracting periodic solution in the cell. You can think of it in the simplest case as just actin, myosin, but you can imagine other proteins. And the interaction is uh, not just a simple chemical act interaction. It could involve uh, calcium and electrolyte lights and so on. But anyway, that's what we think of then as the uh, the proteins is being a state, it's a distribution of proteins in the single cell, the myocyte of a heartbeat. And uh, it's a uh, the basin, the, the, uh, the oscillation is a basin, so everything is going towards that oscillation. That's what we start with. All right, uh, and so we make some natural hypotheses you know, coming from dynamical systems uh, on a, uh, what we call hyperbolic stable solution. It's very stable, robust, so satisfies some basic considerations in biology to have a robust uh, periodic solution, which is a uh, attracting, hyperbolic attractive, we say. And so that's going to be starting point now for the dynamics is the single cell oscillation, which is uh, attracting everything. Okay, uh, so uh, maybe that's our first uh, part of the picture is to see uh, exactly what are the conditions on that attracting oscillator. And that's going to be represent the interactions of these proteins which uh, show us going on in a single cell oscillation. And I was uh, uh, impressed a lot by the work uh, in, in biology for uh, biologists who put in a petri dish, they would put in isolated myocytes, well, it's hard to say. And they would see that uh, all fibrates not in unison, they would just randomly spread around the petri dish. But as they got closer and closer together, then they would begin to uh, be like uh, Huygens uh, clocks. Uh, it would be more and more beating in unison and eventually synchronizing the beat. Uh, this is a petri dish where you don't have a heart or anything, just the heart cells, the myocytes. So uh, that was a good inspiration for me to see that those kind of uh, observations. 
So I do, do uh, believe a lot in data, but I don't use the raw data. I use the data that's already digested by the biologists. That's an example of uh, you know, data-oriented uh, uh, things that the biologists saw. Being with great synchrony of these myocytes when they were put together in the petri dish. So that's kind of an example of what we want to understand uh, generally and uh, systematically for the heartbeat. Uh, so not just in the petri dish, but in the actual heart. Okay. Uh, so one has to then uh, be mathematically precise. What is the single cell dynamics of a myocyte? Okay, so it's going to be given by a, uh, this periodic, stable periodic solution, and it will be uh, have this basin of everything attract, being attracted towards it. That basin is crucial. Uh, all the uh, states. Uh, in the myocyte which are attracted to the periodic solution. So eventually they, they all look like they're periodic, maybe with some kind of variations, oscillations. All right, so uh, we have then the single cell dynamics. And what are the uh, conditions on that single cell uh, oscillation? Well, practically none. It should be stable uh, so that everything is attracted to it. And one other condition uh, is we call it monotonicity. It means it's monotonically attracted towards it. Every state in the basin of that uh, periodic oscillator is being attracted to the oscillator monotonically. It's getting closer and closer as time goes on. It doesn't go away and come back. It's just monotone. And uh, so we assume that. And if you don't, then you get quite immediate counterexamples, first discovered by Turing. So Turing uh, wrote maybe his last or next to last paper, had to do exactly uh, with these kind of questions, where he found examples where without monotonicity, then you do not get any kind of uh, stability, uh, even in the case of a single uh, equilibrium. Generally, he found examples where uh, without monotonicity, the uh, stability fails when you add in some kind of a diffusion, a interaction between the cells. So this, I think, was a great discovery of Turing. Uh, he took it in a different direction, though. He said that's more for genesis. So he liked that, the failure of stability in the cells. Uh, meant, to him, meant for him uh, morphogenesis. And uh, his development of morphogenesis has largely been ignored by biologists. I think rightly so. Because what he did was to idealize morphogenesis not in a s small number of cells, or one cell, several cells. He uh, went to a PDE. So he got uh, what uh, he called, and are called today, reaction diffusion equations, which are important enough. Uh, they're in that, in that same paper of Turing. The reaction diffusion equations can be uh, un help understand things like uh, stripes in the zebra patterns and so on, but uh, they do not help understand how, uh, you know, how a baby. Uh, some starts with a single cell or two cells and so on, dividing slowly. That's an example not of the continual limit of cells, but it's an example of just a very few cells. And so Turing went in the opposite direction with his work uh, in terms of the PDE, the reaction to the fusion equations, which had to do with the infinite limit of the number of cells. So the biologists have uh, pretty much ignored Turing's paper uh, for that reason. But mathematicians have picked it up. Uh, reaction to fusion equations are a big subject in PDE mathematics. Okay, so that's a little bit of the background. While we have to make this hypothesis of monotonicity 
of the uh, periodic solution uh, uh, in the basin. The basin is monotonically going towards uh, uh, stable orbit. I, I did something like that 40 years ago. I was interested in turning this paper. And uh, what I did was use the same ideas. Turing's paper is all linear. Everything is linear. For the PD, it doesn't matter so much. But what I wanted to do was to understand uh, what I call it, the origin of life. I would take, I had this paper where I took two cells. Uh, both of them were stable equilibrium, not periodic. Uh, and then relate them by diffusion. I wanted to go into uh, much more trouble detail about diffusion, but I put in diffusion between two cells, uh, each of which was, uh, I call them dead cells, because everything went to equilibrium. But with the diffusion, but I'm showing you can get a stable uh, periodic oscillation, life. So that was what I call a uh, very figuratively a model of how two dead cells alive by putting that fusion. So I used Turing's model, except I did need a, a nonlinearity because you can't describe the uh, oscillations, stable oscillations, without uh, using linearity. So uh, Turing's uh, was limited that way. Everything was linear for Turing. This is the 52 paper. Okay, so uh, those things came into it. This work I was doing with Nika, uh, this idea is the monotonicity and the idea of using these Turing diffusion. So we follow Turing pretty much on this notion of diffusion. So the idea then of being in unison is when you have different, different cells and they're, uh, they're touching each other and then they start affecting each other and they eventually be in unison. So uh, what Turing did, and what we do, is to assume the cells are different cells now, are connected by a membrane. So you have a membrane structure uh, between many of the cells, there's a membrane connecting them. Okay, so this is a uh, big subject in uh, computer-oriented uh, diffusion, uh, Laplacian, uh, what's called graph Laplacian theory. So uh, we absorb the graph Laplacian theory pretty much. And the idea is, if you look at a, a set of these cells, mathematical cells, which have a, an adjoining uh, a membrane between some of them, uh, that just represents the fact that some of the cells are touching each other. They fuse the proteins from one cell to the adjoining cell through that membrane. Okay, uh, so this is a situation that comes up in this computer, uh, you know, computer graphics. Uh, the uh, graph Laplacian deals with that. So you have a linear uh, term diffusion, which linear diffusion term which tends to uh, move things from one cell to an adjoining cell to equalize the, uh, the protein distributions. So uh, that's called the uh, adjacency matrix, uh, the matrix which relates the uh, diffusion between neighboring cells. And from the adjacency matrix, the standard then to write down the Laplacian, uh, which takes adjacency uh, relationships to define uh, something that's like a little posse in geometry. It tends to even things out. And it will tend to, uh, the Laplacian will tend to equalize the uh, proteins of all the cells. You have some kind of connectedness hypothesis. So every pair of cells meets a sequence of cells which are related to membrane contact. Okay, uh, I could use this sometimes too. Huh?
So here's a, a matrix A called the adjacency matrix. So the AIJ has a relationship between two cells, which uh, is given by a positive diffusion constant, a positive real number, and it tells you tells how uh, the uh, diffusion passes from a cell to an adjacent, <coughs> adjacent cell. And you can write down the uh, Laplacian L equals uh, D minus A. And D is just a rule sum, uh, sum of uh, the A I J. So this gives rise to the uh, notion of Laplacian, which is very, very much like the Laplacian of uh, differential geometry. Many of the same properties, but now the uh, functions are, uh, everything is more computer science oriented in that respect. The functions are going to be functions on the cells. It will be, uh, say, something like this xi, i1 to m. So x is a function on the uh, m nodes or m cells. And so uh, this gives a correspondence between ordinary Laplacian geometry and the Laplacian of computer science. Okay, so uh, you can uh, stop here. Uh, I say things too briefly, or you want to expand on something, or object to what I say, it's tell me. Okay. I dare not object. So, so what is AIJ exactly? What does it mean? Well, AIJ is going to be a, a non-negative real number, uh, which for it it's an interpretation, I and J are two cells. And so AIJ uh, is going to measure the rate of uh, transfer from adjoining cells I to J through the membrane between them. So it's going to be a positive real number, which gives that rate of uh, equalization of the protein I and pro single protein. You have this for each protein, you have AIJ. You know, it's going to have that effect of equalizing the protein throughout the whole uh, cellular system. So I and J are two cells. Yeah. And AIJ is the rate at which something is transferred from cell I yeah, protein. And the matrix A should be very, very big. Then. Yeah. Huge. Huge if you want, yeah. You can make small examples of. No, I, I did a, I did a, And yeah. then L is uh, D minus A. So yeah. D is what? The sum of all the A, I, J? Yeah, in a, in a single row. Yeah. But what is Xi? Then? Xi will be our, uh, our function. It's a function on the cells. Uh, it's going to be uh, xi, is going to be a positive real number, uh, which is a, you know, it's a concentration of simple protein in cell i. And we do this for each protein, but I'm not putting the protein in there explicitly. But uh, the same thing works for every protein. Good. That's yeah, okay. You don't see time? What? Where is time? Hi. Well, that's going to come in soon enough. Okay. These are uh, all static notions. But uh, here's time. You could write, uh, well, oh, yeah, let me go slowly over time. Time has to come in because you said this. Yeah, sure. Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Time is, I'll, I'll get time right now. Maybe answer your questions on time. Okay, so I want to write down the equations of uh, motion that we're uh, describing, okay? So that's the big deal. What, what are the equations? So these are the differential equations of the system that I'm describing. Okay, so let's first take a single cell. So I have, a, for a single cell, I have dxi dp equals f. Okay, and put I here if you want. So that's going to be just ordinary differential equations which describes the dynamics in cell I. Okay, and it's going to be this, what I've already said in words, it's going to be a periodic solution 
in that dynamics, which is a, uh, a trapping for everything in the, in the whole system of uh, proteins for cell life. So the picture here. Is X uh, XI or huh? all X? Is the X, X is the right? Eventually, X is a vector. X1 of the X M, where we have M cells. So the, on the right, I X uh, involves all the other set, all the other. Yeah. Because X I, uh, well, if you look careful, uh, so. For the single, this is for a single cell, cell I. Oops, that cell I. And we do this for each cell. So this is the equations for the genome dynamics of cell I. Okay, now, so X1, so this will involve uh, the end cell, but I'm not quite ready for that yet. This here is just going to be the uh, single cell dynamics, but X itself now, I'm jumping back and forth a little bit between many proteins and one protein. Because uh, if I talk about one protein, it is conceptually not very clear what that means for a single cell. Okay, so we want to have at least a couple of variables, maybe many proteins. Uh, and so this X, uh, maybe I should just cross that off now. So X is a, uh, protein distribution. By that I mean to say a, a sequence of uh, real numbers which indicate how much of each protein is involved in that <coughs> vector uh, X. So X is a protein distribution. I is, a, you know, it's the cell. X, uh, so this would be the protein distribution uh, no, I have to be maybe a little slower here. So I can write dx dt equals f of x for a single cell. Then I can go uh, pretty soon enough to all this, each cell. But for each single cell, I have dx dt equals f of x. This is just an ordinary differential equation with a property that uh, every uh, state in the whole state space, which is going to be a subset of an n-dimensional space, is going to be moving in time to the uh, periodic solution that I mentioned, the attracting solution for each cell, for each cell I. Okay. All right, so, uh, and then we want to assume, as I did before, that everything in the basin, in the state space, will be the base of everything in the basin will be hanging towards gamma, which is the uh, periodic solution. So gamma, I, is periodic solution, cell I. The dynamics of cell I. It's a stable solution, so that needs to be. Here's gamma I. All the other solutions are coming into it. Well, they're coming in monotonically. They don't come in for a little while, go away, and come back. They're going in monotonically, uh, the state approaching the periodic uh, solution to avoid these problems, the turret problems. So that's the only conditions I can say, and we call this basin BI. Okay, so this is the dynamics of a single cell. Okay, so now uh, I want to uh, still pause on that before, before I get back to the Laplacian. Uh, See, there's a uh, theme that goes throughout uh, genomic biology in the 
humans so that they all have the same genes. Okay, each cell has the same genes, every human has the same genes. There is a famous universality that biology believes in. I will argue with it. But I want to even make it more strong. So what we're doing is taking uh, uh, what we have the nature of these things, hard wiring. So we're saying that each dynamical system is the same. For, uh, well, we have different levels. For each tissue, each organ, each tissue, will have the same dynamics. Uh, not only the same proteins, but the same dynamics. Okay, uh, then we have to, that has to be modified a little bit because of chromatin and uh, some kinds of uh, modifications uh, connected to chromatin and uh, other aspects of uh, especially cell, different kinds of uh, tissues. If you have different tissues, different organs, then there will be a little modification of that picture I just said. But mostly now we're going to be looking at a single tissue, the heart. In that single tissue, uh, except for some modifications connected to chromatin, our hardwired hypothesis says not only are those genes the same, but the genome dynamics is the same. So we have uh, the same genome dynamics in each cell of the heart. These are talking especially in myocytes. Uh, the heart cells are related to the uh, pulse. So that's uh, something we, we even had in an earlier paper in Dick and I about hardware uh, with the assertion that the uh, cells of the same cell type, uh, especially in the same tissue, would have the same uh, dynamics. So that's what we're assuming now with the heart and the myocytes, that each cell, single cell, has the same uh, dynamics. But, uh, the same dynamical system, but on the other hand, I shouldn't say same dynamics because the dynamics depends on an initial condition besides the system. So we're not assuming that, uh, the heart that each cell has uh, the same uh, initial conditions. That's something we want to prove, the same phase. So, but they have the same dynamical system. But they're not, uh, they're not uh, moving around in phase. So each cell, a priori, uh, is, is not, they're not synchronized. But they have the same dynamical system. That's our hardwired hypothesis, which is uh, very much related to the uh, hypothesis that every uh, human has the same genes in every cell. So a little stronger than just looking at the single cell type, single tissue. Okay, uh, those are the hypotheses on the collection of these, uh, these cells. The dynamics, they're all the same, but the initial conditions are not. Okay, that makes some sense? Okay, so that gives a picture then of the uh, cell picture. Uh, what I want to do then for our uh, system for the whole heart, and I'm looking just at the myocytes in this picture, the, uh, it's a big product over all the myocytes. It's a product of dynamics. A product of these, all the same type. Okay, so this is not too far from a lot of things in biology. Uh, we're just making it a little more formal. Formalizing that property. Okay, uh, all this is before we get to the diffusion. So now the diffusion says let's just take a single protein. And, uh, forget it. You put that in the notation, we're looking at a single protein because it's going to be the same uh, for each. Uh, protein. Uh, well, uh, 
protein in the diffusion is going to relate the uh, quantities of that protein in different cells. Because that's where you have the fusion, is the passage of uh, two membranes. So it's going to give a, uh, be connected to uh, interaction between cells. And the interaction will be, uh, for each protein, it's going to be independent. So uh, you see the inter uh, actions of different proteins is going to take, uh, take place in a single cell on the cell dynamics. And uh, if you look at all the cells, then you have the diffusion for each protein. This is uh, all the things we're doing. It's fairly consistent with what biologists believe, but uh, they usually have not formalized these things. So what we're doing is making all these things quite formal. So when I talk to biologists, they often uh, don't argue with the, the models, because it's what they believe. It's like we're just saying that more little stronger, more affirmatively mathematically, we were using this exact mathematics of this model that I'm describing to understand the heart. Okay, any questions? So I'm making a lot of drastic statements here. All right, uh, so uh, we have this picture then of the uh, Laplacian now, if you imagine a, a single protein, Laplacian relates that uh, is an interaction between different cells through diffusion of that uh, single protein. Be, uh, different and independent for different proteins. So that's how we're, we're connected. Let's see. And that's why it's mathematically uh, it's a little tricky. Because you have on one hand, in each cell, you have the genome dynamics, which is not linear, it's uh, conversion to an oscillation. And between the uh, different cells, you have the diffusion dynamics. Okay, so this is the, this is kind of uh, the problem we have in trying to understand the uh, dynamics of the heart. And uh, being what I call being in unison, why we get uh, some kind of uh, being in unison? There, uh, I'm missing, skipping out so many things here. Uh, for one thing. Uh, and you can do some good uh, uh, computations uh, with the computer uh, for very, very simple cases of uh, the oscillation was a circle, or maybe a list, but not much more. Uh, in, in that picture, uh, we did see beating in unison. Uh, it, they started out at, uh, with a diffusion term that I described. We started out with uh, different uh, phases, different initial points, then after a while they would be uh, all at the same time, with one big exception. And that is uh, if you take two cells, same, but the initial conditions are opposite to each other. They differ by, say, you have period pi, pi, or uh, say two pi, then if they differ by pi, so they're the opposite then you do not get B in unison. In a very rare case that they're starting opposite to each other, so that the phases differ by pi, then you do not get B in unison. Any, almost anything can happen except B in unison. So yet we do have a big exception where we will not get B in unison in this model and that has to do with the uh, conditions about the uh, Phases being uh, giving ill posed problems by being opposite. If you take three phases all equally distributed around the circle, same thing. It will not, not convert. So uh, this leads to some kind of a conjecture, which you know, I more or less believe, uh, but maybe I'll have some chance to say, say uh, something about the complex uh, that. Generally speaking, with, except, with these exceptions, we will get B in unison. Okay, that's a, a conjecture I still more or less believe, but one has to be careful. It's hard. It's hard to prove. I spent a year on it. 
I'm getting to understand it, I think, but uh, okay. So uh, yeah, so let me uh, go back a little bit. So we have the dynamics has two parts. F is the genome dynamics. Then we have it uh, minus L. This is the fossil uh, dynamics. This is the term I mentioned that uh, relates different cells. This is the term that works with a single, single cell. Sometimes I have to put an S here, but S is a small real number positive. But I think the main term probably, uh, we'll say, if we have small infusion, then uh, almost always we will get B in unison. That would be a conjecture. So this is X prime equals this, fx, x. So here we have to remember now, this x is going to be especially uh, be decoupled uh, into the cells. And this x is going to be decoupled into the proteins. And this is our basic equation. So these are the equations that we have to deal with. Those are exactly the equations. Any questions? Yeah. When you mentioned the word diffusion, yeah. I presume it's diffusion, D-I-F-F-U-S, Is it the same as what one has in probability, the Markov chain? Well, all those things are kind of related. Yeah. Uh, so the diffusion is just the matrix I wrote down before. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Yeah, it's this one. <laughs> This is the L, exactly. Uh, uh, strictly speaking, it has to be you know, for each protein, L equals D minus A, and the harmonic functions just would be the X equals X1 up to X uh, M uh, for each protein, uh, where they're all the same, the constant. There's no random, there's no random component. Uh, no, there is kind of a, yeah, I said no. I mean, you can you can have some <coughs> random interpretations of these things, but no, I don't. I don't. I never put in randomness. That's my own uh, philosophy of science. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't believe in putting in randomness. Of course, no, no, science is very random. Yeah. But I don't build in the randomness to my equations. Except for the initial equations. No. We well, just said. Well, you said that you. If you have uniformly distributed initial conditions, with three. He doesn't see nearly found the way you mean. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. Right. So I, yeah. So yeah, I think it's important to understand that randomness through robustness. I, I believe that uh, randomness should be ideally idealized out, but you take. Uh, Robust equations. That's why I want uh, to, you know, robust periodic solutions, and all the things I do are robust. So it means if you change it a little bit, it doesn't mess up. That's right. That's my philosophy. So you you avoid randomness through robustness. Yes, that's my philosophy. But uh, you know, people like to put randomness in. You can do that, but it just makes everything more confusing. In my case, in my picture. Nothing really good in science. Okay. Not a lot of dogs. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, so these are the equations uh, I've been describing. X prime equals Fx minus S. S is just a positive number. And this is just the uh, the that I've been describing, the graph of Laplacian. X is, uh, you have to be careful about X because it's, uh, when you're careful, it's going to have two uh, uh, indices. One would be the cell and the other is the protein. So this can drive you crazy if you're not careful. So, but these X's have this, and so you're really working with the big uh, matrix. You cross the these are the different uh, cells, up and down, these are the different proteins. 
that's, it, that's part of the problem. Okay, uh, so then, yeah, so uh, I don't know, but I'm using not too much time, I guess, so far. Uh, so and here's the big thing we do, though, and that is to resolve uh, these problems of uh, Laplacian, which deals with states. These are just uh, n tuples, n tuples uh, proteins, the single protein or states. Laplacian deals with those. And uh, the genome dynamics is more focused on phases. Because the phase is how much you're going around this uh, circle. Uh, not the circle, but the closed orbit, the periodic solution. So what I want to do is to reconcile those things. And that's what I think other people haven't done yet. That's because of the conflict between the states, which the Laplacian goes by, and the genome phases, which are just like an angle going around the circle. And so we can make the phases uh, very easy to deal with the genome dynamics. We'll say that uh, we parameterize, take the parameter around the circle uniform. You get the, the vector uh, of the differential equation, which is tangent to the periodic solution. That will be constant length. That's going to make it help uh, the phases, the angles become well under control, then the phases could be taken simply to be the arc length. So then you get arc length, it's the phase, it's the angle, and the arc length are the same. Not to the fixed uh, period. Okay, so that's one thing we do. And so we have the problem of the uh, Laplacian, which doesn't relate to that. So the Way to do this, and uh, yeah, this is a lot of these things is, are in the literature, usually not so formalized, maybe really not so systematic as what we're doing. Uh, but there's something called the uh, this is the uh, uh, I forget words too. So I, we have say here's our gamma. This work uh, comes up even for a single uh, cell. We have something called an isochrome. Here's an isochrome. And here is a solution of, uh, just for example, the genome dynamics. So eventually this can go over. The isochrome is going to be a set of all points that has the same phase as the point on gamma. So here we have the point x on gamma. And all the points in the whole basin, around here is the basin. Whole basin. This is for the single cell. It will eventually work for all the cells by just taking the product. Isochrome means to set up all points for the uh, genome dynamics which have the same uh, uh, phase as x. That would be the isochrome through x. So th this can be done uh, nowadays very cleanly with stable manifold theory. So here we take the period, period of the whole uh, periodic solution, and now we look at the fixed uh, point analysis of that period, and we'll get uh, stable manifolds, uh, which gives us uh, asymptotically these submanifolds of coordination of one of all the points which tend to x under this periodic uh, period fixed map. And that will uh, generate so on. Everywhere you get these isochrons. And that's a very uh, beautiful, you know, I, I think it goes back to Winfrey, I didn't mention Winfrey. Winfrey did a lot. Winfrey did an awful lot of these things way back. Strogatz was his student. Strogatz uh, left Winfrey to become a uh, postdoc with my student, Nancy Capel. But, uh, you know, these things weren't done 
before stable manifold filters really developed, but they had this idea of isochronous. Winfrey did in the mathematics of time. And so we have this picture here. So these are all points with the same phase as X. So what we have here is the structure on the base of B of the isochrons, and then uh, we also have the states. So these are points in B, so they have this little plot here working directly on them, and, but they also have the, the phases built in phase differences and so on, the whole structure of the phases go over from gamma to the whole basin. So uh, the phases that describe every orbit in the whole state space. It's the basins, if you want, are uh, state space where you can take the product of the basins over all the cells. That would be the big state space. Anything this is important for my own picture. Anything outside the basin is not even in the space. The dynamics just don't apply to it. So we're looking at these big basins. It's a product of each of these over all the cells. And uh, we have the isochron products uh, describing very nicely uh, the relationship of the phases uh, and description to every state you have its Isochron. Yeah, uh, well, isochron for each each cell anyway. Okay, uh, so uh, that that's crucial for tying together uh, in this differential equation. Uh, this differential equation here, how to tie together the, the phase picture of F and the uh, more rectangular picture of the Laplacian. Uh, we, we use this phase picture to relate the two. Okay? Is it not making sense? Alright. So, uh, let's see, I'm not sure where I am. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to tell, tell you, maybe just very briefly, uh, the big conflict I had with uh, Charles Pugh, my co-author. Uh, Charles Pugh has got a, uh, some kind of example. Well, he says it's a counterexample uh, to gene uh, his generic hypothesis. Uh, so he's been working in this room month or two, and I'm challenging it now. But it's a, it's a nice example in any case. So here you have here's gamma. It looks like it's on a Mermuda strip. Okay, so it's uh, yeah, so this is gamma. And now uh, what Charles does is to take two states out here. Uh, say this one and that one. Here's x1, x2. These are two states on gamma. Okay, but they're on, uh, so to speak, different leaves of gamma. And, you know, if you make some possibly sensible hypothesis that gamma be convex, then you wash away as an example. But I've stopped. Uh, enjoying uh, convexity or any such hypothesis. So now I, I want to do the following. He says that these two points will have a center of mass here, and there is a whole center of mass velocity to the Laplacian. Uh, maybe I should just say what it is. Any of you, some of you will know this. The Laplacian by itself, uh, on a single protein even, uh, for all the proteins, uh, Laplacian uh, is linear and it uh, has this following property. The description of the Laplacian is that the solutions of the Laplacian, all the solutions, is linear, they all go to the center of mass of the uh, 
original initial conditions repeated for each protein uh, uh, one by one. So you look at, uh, so to speak, the idle element of the center of mass. So the, what you have is that the Laplacian dynamics is, if you look at it, is just by using a spectral theory of the Laplacian. All the eigenvalues of minus Laplacian, they're all uh, positive. Negative eigenvalues are positive except for zero. Zero is uh, always there. Okay, uh, so one looks at that spectral theory, and one sees the whole structure of the Laplacian dynamics. It has this property that it's, uh, everything goes to the center of mass, uh, repeated center of mass. That's what means that, you know, the Laplacian equalizes <coughs> concentrations. It goes to the repeated center of mass. And so the center of mass repeated is just uh, for the proteins that they all have the same uh, uh, equilibrium, the, the constant. And the uh, Laplacian has that property that equalizes uh, protein distribution. The uh, constants for the Laplacian are those on the diagonal, or uh, everything is the same. Okay, that's underlying a lot of this work with the Laplacian. Okay, uh, now if we uh, do that here and look at the center of mass in Charles' example, here is the, uh, this point here is the center of mass. This actually is two, uh, here's the center of mass, center of mass, repeated. And that's going to be a point halfway between uh, these two states. So uh, he says in this example, Things are going to go to here, center of mass, like what I already said. And that leads to a lot of problems. Okay, uh, and I suggest, although I'm not sure about this, maybe some of you will be able to do this, that this is not feasible. See, this is a gamma, and we're working it now, and we're going to be working in a small neighborhood of gamma where. Uh, the Laplacian effect is small, so you're looking at a uh, genome dynamics dominated solution. And so this, this point is not in the basin. No matter what you do, it will never be in the basin. It's not feasible. So I think uh, that, that hurts this example. Because, so he says this forces x1 and x2 to be closer and closer and so you'll never get B in unison because these have got opposite uh, phases. That's what Charles says. He's been saying it for a while. And what I'm suggesting is uh, this is a, doesn't make sense because this is not in the feasible uh, region. Uh, the point is not in the basin. It's not feasible. So uh, the fact that this well, Plantain tries to get you here, uh, it, it, it doesn't work because getting away from gamma is, uh, gets away from feasibility. That's, this is why I'm giving you my own point of view towards this. And so what I'm suggesting is we take this point here and uh, imagine it coming around here. So here would be x1 uh, uh, later time, x2. It's coming here at a later time. And so these later uh, 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 state positions, they will uh, have a, uh, oh wait a minute, I got that wrong. X2, they should uh, end up on the same, uh, oh yeah, x1 going this way, we we here, sorry. So here would be x1 and here's x2. If they go in the appropriately opposite directions. And so I'm thinking now that this would say that this is getting close to uh, center mass, we should say, closer to the diagonal. So uh, 
If you imagine uh, the genome and dynamics being stationary, it doesn't move you around. It's going kind to, of, you can look at the Laplacian, it will go this way for x1 and this way for x2, and you get being in unison uh, at a point over here. So you would have the same uh, state. Anyway, I'm making a long story, very short here. Uh, but uh, that's where we have now a conflict uh, unresolved. And I'm not sure of my point of view either, because you know it's hard to uh, hard to argue when you can't. You know, this is unfeasible, and is this going to happen? I think maybe it does, but I'm not. I don't have a clean uh, argument for that. Maybe that's. I'm making a long, long story, very short here, about so much of this. Uh, there's a lot of things going on, how to put all this together with this beauty and unison, together with the Laplacian dynamics, and seeing how they fit together in that simple equation that I mentioned all the time, this equation right here. This is the equation that dominates the whole, uh, the whole system, so it's very simple. But to understand this is a big, big deal. Thanks very much. Questions for Michael? Yeah. Okay. So I just had one question. I didn't see where the, uh, the local aspect of the problem came from. All cells don't communicate with people. What's that? All cells won't communicate with people. You would think that only those cells that are close together sure. would, would communicate. Uh, I didn't see that effect in it. Is there some sparsity in oh, the, no, uh, the posse? Yeah, well, posse in itself only had, uh, has uh, membranes between adjoining cells. Right. So, it, yeah. It's the, sparse. It's very yeah. sparse. Yeah. Yeah. L is defined by adjacency matrix, which only connects cells that are close together in the interpretation. Yeah, so A is sparse. So yeah. by unison, you, uh, you actually mean the, the phase, all the cells will keep on the same phase, all the proteins. What's that about? By unison, you want all the things are on very different initial lines. Okay, so, yeah, so, it's good, good, but, uh, I want to do this uh, being in unison for each protein independently. Yeah. Yeah, so being in unison is being in unison for each protein. They have the same period but different phase. And uh, after Laplace and. Yeah, different phases because the they're phase. different initial conditions. And you will get uh, <coughs> phase differences will exist. Between generally between the two uh, cells. Then how the beating unison, you, I mean, <coughs> when you synchronize somehow. Yeah, when you synchronize, you do that for each protein. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Beating unison means that for each protein, you will have uh, the same dynamics. Yeah. For, for each protein. For each Di protein. Yeah, for different proteins, you sure won't. The same dynamic, but with different initial initial phase, say. Uh, yeah. So for a single protein, you get uh, the initial phases, phase differences will disappear by the velocity. Yeah. For each for each protein, the phase okay. differences disappear and they become being in unison for that protein. Yeah. For different proteins will work out uh, differently. So meaning unison means for each protein you have the same condition, uh, same phase. But in the Mobius uh, script uh, example, yeah. actually they have the same type of dynamics, but uh, the phase could be just on the opposite. And uh, if you apply the Laplacian on these different phase, 
will that be false to the same class? Yeah, so uh, it's a little, uh, not quite, quite so clear what happens when you apply the Laplacian to this picture. Yeah, see, because Laplacian applied naively would say you go uh, off the basins, right? Yeah. Uh, say the same uh, protein for the moment. On the other hand, uh, it's, uh, not, that's not ill-posed and it's not a genuine uh, motion. But going along here is, because no matter how small you take S, you still keep close to gamma. And so then uh, this X2 moving along here and X1 moving along here, that's perfectly uh, legitimate. And I think that's probably what happens. The X1 and X2 get close on the opposite side here. One goes in one line, the other goes this way. So maybe the Laplacian can, if a very small S may not force the dynamics to the synchronized version, or you think? I, I, you have to make S small because otherwise uh, it gets a little too confused. Uh, yeah, so I want to take S small. Okay. Yeah, as large is very large. Huh? How about if S is very large? Plus everything. Well, it's a little confusing to me because you're going to be leaving the basin with large S. Uh -huh. So I don't want to leave the basin. <coughs> leaving the basin means you're. Uh, Destroy the, the. Yeah, you're not. I can't do that. Yeah. I see. I mean, the dynamics has a state space, and that is the basin. This is the product of all the basins of all the cells. And that, uh, that's, this, that's this legitimate space of the dynamics. That's my point of view. Charles argues outside, you know, things going outside the basin. I say it's not even there. Outside of the basin is an error. So large S takes you outside the basin. The small S makes the basin thinner and thinner and thinner. Can I ask? Yeah. Very odd. Because for hard series, they sometimes they just fuse together. Two hard series, they fuse together. Yeah. So, is it possible to say for the unison actually, uh, for the move to different direction because they fuse together? Then, then I don't know. <laughs> I think you are, uh, the skeletal muscles that fuse together. I don't think cardiac muscles used to get Myocytes. These are myocytes responsible for the being. Okay. Yeah, there are these other structural cells which don't play a role in the being. You can really see if you put cells into a petri dish and the cardiac myocytes start to beat in unison. Yeah. Is that possible to simulate this example? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, this goes way back. How 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 the how does it be? Being in unison is uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you see it biologically. It's a uh, kind of one go this direction. <coughs> Oh, uh, this example here that I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so Charles is trying to get Indina to this on the computer to resolve it. Maybe he will. I don't know. Um, he hasn't done it. He hasn't done it. Not the I'm planning to do this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you so much.